Duplicating XAML will make your application harder to maintain. So in this video, I want to go over how to create reusable user controls to prevent and remove any duplication of XAML. And this is a pretty straightforward WPF concept, but it's often overlooked, even though the benefits of creating reusable user controls is just through the roof. And we're going to see that in this demo. So for this application, we're going to have a bunch of tiers. Now, currently, I just have one tier. So here are my tiers and the only tier I have is the basic tier. Now I'm going to add some new tiers and I have that whole tier inside of this grid right here. So you know what? I'm just going to copy and paste this grid. Let's just take the whole thing. I'm adding two more tiers. So paste once, paste again, and then I'll just update all of this. So I'm going to have the pro tier as the second tier. This tier is going to be blue. We'll update the description. And I also have join buttons on all these tiers. And whenever we click that, that fires a click handler, which I have in my code behind. And that just pops a message box that we join the tier. So I'm going to have to create new ones for all of my tiers. So this will be on join pro clicked and we'll create that handler in just a second. Let's move on to the other tier. And this is going to be the enterprise tier. So kind of like the visual studio tiers, maybe I should have done community as the most basic, but this will do. And the fill for this will be green update the description and create a new click handler on join enterprise clicked. And before I create those click handlers, I think I'm gonna have to wrap all of my cards into a grid so I can put them in separate columns. So let's surround this with a grid and that grid will be in our second row, so grid row one. And then we'll have some columns in here. So each tier will go in its own column and we'll update that. So column zero for the first grid, column one for the second grid, get rid of this row, and column two for the last grid. Hopefully that'll look good. We might have to play around with that, add some margins or something, but let's create those click handlers. So just gonna copy this and create two new ones. So on join pro click, successfully join the pro tier one join enterprise clicked successfully join the enterprise tier and let's go ahead and run this all right so this actually looks pretty good they are different widths so i'm going to update that i think if we just set a width on the actual grid let's go ahead and do that so let's make all of them 200 just for now that might not be the best solution but it will look good with our current layout all right that looks good and then we can join each of the tiers and it pops the message box but i noticed something that's a little bit off so i have this black border around all of my colors for the tiers and i don't like that border i just wanted to be a little bit more fluid and just blend into the background no border necessary so we're going to go through and remove the border all right so let's remove it here and then okay i'm gonna have to go down and remove it here and then my last rectangle remove it here and there we go that looks good that's what i wanted but I just had to update that in three places. And that was a pretty simple update. All I did was remove three lines, one in each place. But what if my changes were a lot more drastic? Then I'd have to do those changes in all three places. Ideally, I would just want to do it in one place, in one card that I'm reusing for all of these different tiers that I have. So that is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to create a custom control that'll display our tier content. And then we can just reuse that control for each of our three tiers. So let's create a folder in our project. We're going to call this components. You can call it controls, components, whatever you wish. And we're going to create a new item in here. And this is going to be a user control. So I'm going to call this the tier card because it kind of looks like a card and it displays a tier. And there we go. So now back in the main window where we have our tiers defined, let's just copy one of them and plop it into our tier card. There we go. And now we can reuse this. But the issue is that we're gonna have to pass a bunch of different content into this tier card. So for example, we can't just hard code the title as basic because we need a different card for basic pro and enterprise. So we're gonna have to get this content passed in. And the way to do that is with a dependency property. So in our code behind, we're gonna define some dependency properties. The first one we want is the title. So we can do a prop DP snippet should be built into Visual Studio. So expand that. And this is the title property. It's going to be a string because it's just text. The owner class is this tier card. And by default, we can make it string dot empty. And now when we use this tier card, we can pass in the title that we want. So let me actually demonstrate that real quick. So back in the main window, let's just completely get rid of this first grid for basic. And let's use our tier card. So we can do a control dot on that and import our components or controls namespace whatever you called it. And now we can pass in the title that we want and we want basic as our title. So we pass in basic that gets set as the dependency property, the title dependency property on our tier card. And now we want to use this value that's on our tier card in our actual XAML. 
So to do that, we can use a binding here and we're gonna be binding to the title property but we need to reference the tier card as the source for this binding. It doesn't do that by default. So the easiest way to do that is to give our user control a name. I'll just call it root because it's the root of our control. And then we can reference that down here. So pass in root and we're getting the title dependency property on our root and binding to it. So it will display inside this text block. And now we should see that in our application. So let's run this and we should see that title and we get an error. And that is because we have this click handler on our tier card, but we haven't implemented that. And we're just gonna remove that for now. There we go. And let's run this. And there we go, we get basic as our title here. So now we just need dependency properties for the other content we have, such as the color of our rectangle, and then this description that we have down here. And we're also gonna have to do something special for handling this join button click, which we'll do in a second, but let's set up those dependency properties. So we are gonna have a description, which is also a string on the tier card, and by default will be string.empty. And while we're here, we're gonna have another one. This is gonna be for the color property, and the type of this is actually gonna be a brush on the tier card again. And by default, we can do brushes dot, I guess we'll just do transparent as default, that works. And now let's use these dependency properties on our actual tier card. So let me just copy this binding and we're gonna set that as the fill, but this time binding to the color. So as you can see, IntelliSense does pick up those dependency properties, that is nice. And then finally, the description. So let's change that. And there we go. So now we just need to pass those in where we use the tier card. So the description we had was the most basic tier and the color was yellow and now let's run this and we should have the same thing there we go looks good but now if i try to join the basic tier it doesn't work because we removed our click handler so i want to get that back and you might think okay just grab the handler from our main window that we were using before and paste it inside of the tier card code behind but we can't do that because we're gonna have to support each of these different click handlers we can't just bake one of them into the tier card so what we need to do is have this button click propagate up and then define the handler that we want. So the handler is gonna be the same thing that we have in our code behind. So to get that click to propagate up from the join button, we're gonna to have to define a routed event. So this is another fundamental WPF concept in addition to these dependency properties. And sadly, I do not have a snippet for routed events. I don't think there's one built into Visual Studio either. So we will have to manually define it. So first we need to define a routed event as static on our tier card. And this is gonna be the join click event. And we're gonna register that using the event manager, register a routed event, and that's what we want. We're gonna name this join click. The routing strategy will be bubble. I go more in depth about routed events in my custom control series. So I'll link to that rather than going too deep into it now. I'm not exactly sure what our handler type is gonna be, but it's gonna be the same handler type as whatever the button click event is. So we'll figure that out in a second. We'll just scaffold that out. Let me move this to a new line so we can see everything. And last but not least, the owner class is the tier card. And now we need the actual event for this routed event that we defined. And that's gonna be a regular .NET event. We're still not sure about the handler type. So I'm just gonna put this as a routed event handler. Might have to change that in a second. And this is the join click event. And this has to match what we have here. So in fact, we can use name of just to make sure that those always match and it's strongly typed. And now whenever we subscribe to this event, we'll call add handler. And we're adding a handler to this join click event for the value that we subscribe with. And then same kind of thing when we remove or unsubscribe, remove handler. And now we need to raise this routed event whenever we click our join button. So we are gonna have a click handler on here. We'll call this on join click. And now that we have this generated, we see that this method signature is for the routed event handler. So we know that that is the type of our handler, just because this method signature matches the delegate of a routed event handler. So now, whenever we click that join button, we wanna raise our join click event. And to do that, we can call raise event, and we need some routed event args in here. And the event that we're raising is the join click event. So this event is gonna get raised. Now we need to handle this event in our main window. So we can have a join click handler, and that is gonna be for on join basic clicked in this case. And now, if we run this, we click join, and there we go, our message box is back. So now we have all of our card functionality. Now we can just use it for our other tiers. 
So let's copy this and paste it two more times. This time we're gonna have the pro tier, which is blue. A join click, we'll call it one join pro clicked. And this is the tier for pros. And lastly, we have enterprise, which is the best tier. And that is green. And the handler for that being joined is on join enterprise clicked. And now we can delete all of this XAML that we had duplicated. And look at this, this is just so much fun. Just completely remove everything. And now we have so much less duplication, so much less XAML and the same functionality, except we didn't put these into their grid columns. So let me just update that real quick. So grid column one and two for enterprise. There we go, that's what we want. And now, you know, I decided maybe I did like those borders that we had on these rectangles. So let's add that back. And now all I have to do is go to my single card and set the stroke as black and there we go, it's added, and I only had to change it in one place. So I'm pretty satisfied with what we've done so far. We've reduced a lot of duplication, but let's tackle some more tricky concepts. So maybe for my enterprise header, I wanna have like a little star to the side here, just to denote that that is the best here, and I want that to be an image. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we really can't because our title is just a string. We can't pass in an image to put next to that. So real quick, let me just get a star in here. Let me create a new folder for resources. I have a star PNG I'll drop in here. And then we have to change this to copy always and has to be content. And I have the source control link in the description if you want to grab this image. But anyways, back to getting that star into the header. Well, our header cannot be a text block. Instead, it can be anything. It can be any combination of controls. It can be, in our case, we want a text block and an image. So what we're going to have to do is change our header. And actually I call this title, maybe we should call it header. So we're gonna update that. It's gonna be the header property. And instead of it being a string, it's gonna have to just be an object because it can be anything. It can be any control, any combination of controls. And let me just update this real quick, the header property. And again, it's gonna be an object. And now I'm gonna put this header into my tier card. And the way to do that is by putting it inside of a content control. So the content for this content control is gonna be a binding to my header on my user control, which I named root. And let's copy some of these dependency properties. So we want it in grid row one and with the margin again, and we're gonna remove our text block. And now here on the tier card, I'm gonna to have to define my header. So to do that, we can open this up, set the tier card header, and we're gonna define that with some XAML. So for the basic and pro tiers, I just want text blocks. Same thing as before with the text as basic in this case, and they're both gonna have font size. I believe we had 28, maybe it was 24. I don't remember, I think it was 24 actually. And then let's remove this title dependency property because we don't even have that anymore. And let's just copy this header to all of our other tier cards. So paste that in there and paste it for the enterprise tier, which we're gonna have to change to put the star next to that. Get rid of the title dependency properties, update this to pro, and update this to enterprise. Now for enterprise, like we said, we want that to have a star next to it. So I'm gonna surround this in a stack panel and that can be horizontal. And next to this enterprise text block, we're gonna have an image and the source for that is gonna be the resources star.png. Hopefully that's the correct path. And we'll throw some margin to the left as well. And it's gonna be pretty small. So we're gonna make it I guess 20 by 20. And let's check this out. So we can define any kind of content we want inside of our header. And let's see how that looks. And there we go. So we got the star next to enterprise. I guess it's a star. I think it's actually called explosion.png, but I just renamed it the star. Looks good enough. But the main idea here is that we have a lot more flexibility because we can pass in any kind of header that we want. Now we created the reusable tier card, but you can create reusable controls all day. So maybe, I would want these tier cards to be used somewhere else in my application. Maybe I'd want it on like the home screen and then maybe like on the join screen, I don't know. So maybe I could wrap all of these tier cards into some kind of tier card listing component. And that's what we're gonna do real quick. So this is gonna be the tier card listing and we're just gonna copy all of that from the main window. So just this entire grid, we can actually cut that, paste it here get rid of this grid row and import our tier card. And we can actually do that by just changing this local namespace to components 
because our tier card listing is in the same namespace as the tier card. And there we go. And I'm actually just going to copy over all of my event handlers to the tier card listing control as well. So we can cut those out, paste those in the tier card listing code behind so that we can reuse these for all of our tier card listings. And now in the main window, let's use our tier card listing Put that in grid row one and there we go we got our tier card listing and now we can reuse this all throughout our application if we needed to i wouldn't recommend just making a million components unless you actually really need to reuse them i think of course it doesn't hurt to do so anyways so the last thing i want to cover is how does this compare to custom controls in scenarios where you do something like inherit from button or inherit from control well in those cases you're most likely defining some kind of custom functionality for that control. So for example, in my custom control series, I create an analog clock. Now that analog clock does all kinds of complicated things. It keeps track of time. It updates the hands on an analog clock. So there's parts to that control. And I put all that functionality into a custom control. And then the actual template for that control is defined somewhere else and can be overwritten in other places. So it's known as a lookless control. And the main purpose for those is just reusing functionality. So I would recommend custom controls in that case, if you have some kind of complex functionality that you want to reuse and isn't dependent on how it actually looks. And I would use this reusable user control approach. If you want to reuse a bunch of controls that you put together, such as all the controls in this tier card that don't really have any advanced functionality. And we can see that in the tier card code behind, we don't really have anything advanced. We just define dependency properties, routed events. There's not really any logic that we do inside of this code behind. So it's pretty simple. The main idea here is just putting UI controls together so that we can reuse them. So keep that distinction in mind and hopefully you can create your own reusable user controls in your own applications so that you can reduce or remove XAML duplication. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.